Statistics and Excel. Perfect positive correlation. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank. Example, in essence, answer key. The practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can get to the heart of the practice problem. The blank tab, blank worksheet so we can practice formatting cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing, where we will be going. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep complex and nuanced questions if you would like a commercial free experience consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com we're going to be thinking about correlations in other words two different data sets to see if there's a relationship, mathematical relationship or correlation between them. Are they moving together in some way? If there is a correlation, the next logical question would be, is there a cause and effect relationship that is resulting in that correlation? And then the next logical question would be, what's the driving factor? Uh, which of the two sets of data are driving the correlated relationship and what, of course, is the cause of that. All right, we want to first look at a perfect correlation, which is something we don't always find in nature because usually when we're thinking about correlations, it may not be a perfect correlation. They tend to move in alignment, but not perfectly aligned. But let's take a look at the perfect scenario first, which happens with things like conversions, for example. So if you have a set of data that are in inches, and then you look at another set of data that's in feet, then they're gonna be correlated, uh, perfectly correlated together because of the conversion. So what we'll do is we'll actually make our inches data from the randomly generated uh, norm.dist function just to practice that. So we'll have a bell curve kind of information. We will round it and then we'll do our feet conversion. We'll do our mean, our standard deviation. We'll plot it out in terms of the norm.dist, just so you can see the relationship uh, that way as well. If you had a set of data that was conforming to one of our distributions we've talked about in the past, uh, such as the normal distribution or bell curve. And then we'll plot out our uh, data set and look at the Z scores and we'll calculate the actual correlation. We'll do it both in kind of a mathematical format within Excel. And then we'll use some Excel tools to calculate that correlation and also look at our data uh, set over here that'll give us some standard statistics just to uh, practice with that as well all right let's go to the blank tab to start it out i'm going to select the entire worksheet with the triangle right click on the selected area and format the cells within the cells we're going to say we want currency negative numbers bracketed and red let's remove the dollar sign i'm going to start with no decimals to start out with and okay let's go to the home tab font recording recording when you're on camera you've got to be bold you've got to be bold so that's what i'm doing here mean so we're going to say i'm going to start to create the generated data so we're going to randomly generate data that we can play with here so i'm going to say the mean is 36 to do this i'm going to conform it to a bell curve later on we'll do some just random data but i'm going to conform it to a bell curve randomly generated bell curve data which still has randomness in it standard deviation is 15. these are the, some conditions we need to have met in order for us to generate this data that conforms to like a bell curve uh, situation let's make a skinny c and then i'm going to say this is going to be in inches so i'm going to imagine this in inches let's make this our header format home tab font group bucket drop down black and white on here and let's center it alignment and center and then we're going to go to the data tab 
we're using the analytics analysis. If you don't have the analysis tool pack, then go to the file tab over here. You wanna to go to the options down below, and then you want to be on general, uh, I'm sorry, not general, add-ins, add-ins, and then you want the Excel add-ins, and then go, and then tick off the toolkit, the tool pack. Powerful, it's a powerful pack of tools. And then we'll have the data, the analysis, and then the data analysis. And we're looking for the random number generation, random number generation, and okay. And then let's say it's gonna be a one here for the columns, number uh, number of random numbers. Let's make, let's make some uh, like kind of a more unusual, let's make like 310. Uh, I, I don't like just putting 100 all the time because then, you know, sometimes it, it, it comes out that we always think of as a sample of being like 100. But in any case, let's hit the drop down and say that we're going to say this is a normal, uh, hold on, K Paso, normal distribution right there. All right, then what do we need in order to generate this? We need the mean. So you need to be mean in order to generate this. So go out and be me. No, you don't have to be me. You need the mean, like the average, the average. And then down here, I want to put this somewhere. Where do I want to put it? I want to put it right there. That's where it needs to go, yo. Uh, did you just say yo? What is wrong with you? Okay. What do you mean, yo? I was, okay. So there we have it. And then let's round this inches rounded. So I'm gonna I'm gonna round it now to a whole number. So now I'm gonna say inches rounded. Now we could have generated this any other way. You could have used random data and you'll still have a, a correlation that will be perfectly correlated because we're gonna be converting inches to feet. But I just wanna practice the random generation because we could possibly be looking at a data set that has a bell curve related to it. Uh, say we're talking about inches of something in nature, how long a worm is or something, and then, or a snake, I guess, in this case, I don't know. And then we can say it will have some kind of bell curve. And then of course, when we convert it to feet, the feet you would think would have a similar kind of relationship. All right, so inches rounded. Let's go to the home tab, font group, black, white. Let's wrap it, let's center it. And I'm gonna round this thing equals round it down so round i'll just pick the one to the left and then i'm going to say comma two digit to two digits that's to the whole numbers close it up and boom there it is 16 on the whole numbers now my format up here is in a in a number generation because when i generate these it it puts it back into the general so i'd kind of so well let's keep it like that we'll keep it like that i'm just going to double click it down and boom brings it on down so what happened to this one I and oh it's a negative interesting because it was a bell curve so we had a negative number okay so there we have it now if I convert to feet let's convert it to feet and we're gonna say okay font group black white center so feet would be inches divided by 12 that's how we do things over here in America, we use this weird, you divide it by 12, like 12, that's so sloppy. Like, why don't you use a unit of measure based on 10, you know? That would make sense. Whatever, whatever, this is how we do things. Home tab, number group, tell me, don't tell me, get the king of England over here trying to tell me that I have to, or we, measure actually we got our measurements from the king of king, the king of england's foot i think is how we anyways whatever that's how it is so i'm going to close this up and then we're going to say all right then all right let's make a skinny g a skinny g skinny skinny g and then we're going to say inches let's say i'm going to say this is going to be equal the inches again rounded and then the feet and I'll just copy the format painter this time home tab clipboard format painter boom all right let's make it let's make the mean mean is going to be equal to we'll say average tab going on over to the inches and control shift down 
taking the average of it we can add some decimals decimalizing it home tab number group decimalize and then we're going to say this is the feet equals average decimalize isn't a word by the way but i'm making it into a word control shift down i think it will be a word once i have uh shown its utility in practice decimalized all right then we're going to say this is going to be standard deviation equals the standard deviation we're look we're moving to the sample this time so s not the population standard deviation of the sample tab i'm going to control shift down picking that up boom decimalize in that one home tab number decimalize so we could really recognize you can't recognize how they really are unless you can see the decimals you need to see the decimals you need to get under the hood before you know who they really are home tab number group decimalize okay uh so 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 now when i compare these two obviously i can look at the difference now the difference and i could say all right well what if i was to like look at these two this way i could look at the difference in the mean and the difference in the standard deviation but that doesn't tell me too much right because home tab number group because they're in different units so it doesn't that doesn't really help me uh but i could compare like their z scores so that's one thing i can do i can compare uh and and that's how our correlation will basically work before we do that however let's first let's first imagine that we're, we're going to say hey that this set of data looks like it might look might look like a bell curve like if i select this data i'm going to go hmm is there a relationship with this data if i select all this data control backspace and then go insert and make a histogram from it here's my histogram based on inches so this is the inches histogram and why is it not when i type you do something that's how computers work computer don't you start protesting on me you know i was typing something so and if i do the same thing for the feet control shift down backspace control backspace and insert and then boom and then this is going to be feet okay so i can see there's kind of a relationship right i can say yeah those look kind of similar uh, but i can't really compare that center point of course because they're in different units but it's like okay well they both look similar they both look like they conform possibly to a bell curve relationship so maybe i would maybe i'd compare the bell curve just to play with the bell curve before we get into the correlation here and then so i'll do that because that'll be fun muy divertido muy divertido okay so this is going to be then let's say we'll take the standard deviation let's take four standard deviations so if i'm going to do this bell curve thing what i want to do is plot out the bell curve x for inches and then p of x and then we'll do the z as well and then we'll do the same thing for x for feet and then p of x and then we'll do the z for feet this will be the z for inches all right but i need to know how far i need to go where where do i need to start at with my x's so i can say we'll do the four standard deviations as we saw in a prior unit because that'll encompass the vast vast majority of the data so i'm going to say four standard deviations and let's say that we go upper x and lower x so i'm going to put them i'll keep the same headers here inches and feet this time so the upper x is going to be equal to the mean plus the standard deviation times four that's as high as we that's as how, how far up we're going to go and the lower I, wait i usually do the lower first don't i let's do the lower 
lower x and then the upper x. So let's be consistent if you would. Otherwise you confuse people times this, no, it's minus, minus this times four. Okay, so that makes sense. So we're taking the 16.29 times four standard deviations minus the center point, the mean. All right, so negative 30. And then this one is gonna be equal to uh, the upper, which is gonna be the center point of the mean plus the standard deviation times four standard deviations. Okay, that is making more sense. And then this one, if we do it in feet, is gonna be equal to the feet middle point, the mean, times the standard deviation times four. I'm not times, minus the standard deviation times four. So middle point minus four standard deviations will get us to the lowest x, and then we'll take the upper x, which will be the middle point, plus the standard deviation times four. Okay, let's add some decimals here. Home tab, number, decimalizing all four of them at one time. Boom. Decimalize. And then we'll close. Let's shorten this up. And so there's that. And then what we will do then is let's make these black and white making them our headers home tab font group black white alignment center the inches let's make this smaller too let's wrap them as well home tab alignment wrap them wrapping wrap them like santa claus on christmas eve Okay, so then we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna start with the inches at the lower, which is gonna be negative 30. So I'm gonna say negative 30, and then I'll say third, and we'll say then 30, this is gonna be negative 29, and so on and so forth. I'm gonna copy it down till we get to 100. So I'm gonna say, let's drag it down, that's not too many. I should be able to get there pretty fast. It's still kind of far, but it's not too bad. I could have done my sequence formula to make it más rápido, faster. But let's go back up to the top. And then we're going to say, okay, let's do our norm.dist equals norm.dist. And then we're going to take our x here, comma. We're going to take the mean which is gonna be this one that's outside my data set, therefore want to make it absolute, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the I and the two, comma, and then the standard deviation, picking up this one, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the I and the three, comma, do we want it cumulative? No, therefore zero or false, close it up, and let's decimalize, let's, let's percentize it, home tab, number percentize and decimalized percentize and decimalize and then we'll copy it down and there's our normal uh, distribution and then we can look at the z score which would be equal to brackets the negative number minus the middle point the mean and then i'm going to f4 on that one to make it absolute dollar sign before the i and the two closing up the brackets and divided by the standard deviation f4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the i and the three and enter there's the z score let's decimalize it home tab number group decimalize and double click the fill handle so there we have our z score and then i'm going to make the p smaller and let's do the same thing and say the feet also looks like it's conforming to a bell curve, of course, because it's converted. So I'm going to say, let's do that here too. Let's just copy this format. Home tab, clipboard, format painter, pasting that here. And let's just play with this one. We're going to say, all right, the negative, the feet needs to go down. How low does it need to go? We're going to say it goes down to negative three and then negative two. And then we'll bring it up to 
Eight. Eight. Boom. All right, and then let's do our norm.dist equals norm.dist. We're picking up the mean, F4 on the keyboard, making it absolute, comma, standard deviation, and F4 on the keyboard, making it absolute, comma. Oh, hold on. First was the X. I have to pick up the X. I got ahead of myself. And then comma, then the mean, then the mean. So then the mean, and then F4 on the keyboard, making an absolute comma, then the standard deviation, standard D, F4 on the keyboard, making an absolute and comma, and then we want a zero or false, closing up the brackets and enter. Let's percentize and decimalize, home tab, number group, percentize, decimalize, double click in the fill handle, to bring it on down. So there we have it. Let's take the Z score, which is gonna be equal to brackets, the three minus the, uh, the mean, F4 in the keyboard to make it absolute, closing up the brackets, dividing by the standard D, F4 in the keyboard and enter. Let's decimalize it, home tab number group, decimalize and double click to bring it down. So there we have it. Now, if I, so if I looked at this bell curve kind of relationship, I can start to compare like the Z scores. So remember, I can't really compare the, the units themselves, but I can start to look at the Z score and I can say, okay, well, this, this one, like this four, I don't see anyone, a four over here, but this 3.62 is similar to this, 3.62 right so if i like huh that's interesting right we can kind of see patterns happening here 3.62 3.62 and then i can be like well this 2.8 uh is there, there's a 2.88 here and so let's make this a different color and say hmm 2.88 2.88 and if we looked at uh, if we looked at one uh, foot, one foot, one point four one, going to say one point four one, and compare that to the z score over here, you're like, all right, one point four one is twelve inches, right? So we kind of see that. Well, that sounds twelve inches is one foot. Z score is the same. You see how you, we see a relationship happen if there's if I go to 24 inches, say, I think I see a pattern here, 24 inches, that's 0.67. I would think that would be like two feet, 0.67. So you see, you see how these things are, you could say, you could start to see where the patterns are lined up because of the Z scores could kind of help you to line things up and say, okay, I think there's, there seems to be a relationship here. And that's in essence what the, the Z score is kind of doing. So what we'll do, uh, we're going kind of long here. So I'm going to copy the formula on the Z score and it's going to look something like this. So next time we'll, we'll consolidate right now. We've kind of come very, we're like, there's gotta be a relationship between these data sets, right? We already know there's a relationship, but we can say, well, I, I noticed that it conforms to a bell curve. And I noticed that both the inches and the feet conform to a bell curve. And then when I plotted out the actual, uh, like a bell curve based on the data for inches and feet, I can kind of see a relationship between the Z scores. And so now I could say, well, can I use those Z scores to kind of define the relationship mathematically? And here's the formula that we'll look into. We're going to sum up in essence, the first Z score minus the second Z score over the N minus one and the N minus one uh, is the number of items minus one, which usually corresponds or ties into when we're using the sample data as to like the population data. And so, and so this will give us our formal kind of Z-score calculation and we'll do it a couple, we'll calculate that a couple different ways uh, next time. I said formal Z-score, it'll give us, we already calculated the Z-scores, but the Z-scores will be used within it to get the formal correlation calculation and we'll do that next time.